Vani Pricharini Nirvishe Shashamyavadi Asuchacha De Satarini Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya So this month of December is always a very important month for Malaysia, for the temples in Malaysia. We know we have many Rathiyatras in this month. And in addition to that, there's, there is also, of course like tomorrow, an important festival with the disappearance of His Divine Grace on Vishnupad Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati Prabhupada. We have also other festivals which come in that month with Christmas and then the New Year festival. So it's very important time for our yatra and it's an opportunity for us our thinking and trying to introduce Krishna consciousness more. We all have a duty. Srila Prabhupada used to tell us, he said that book distribution is our family business. Just like if you're born in some family and your family have maybe a cloth shop or maybe your family have a bakery or whatever business your family have. Because it's a family business, you take an interest in it and you'll go there and you'll learn, you'll help out, you'll go there and put time in there and try to help to make the business successful. So similarly, in our Krishna Consciousness Movement, we all have a duty to try to take part in our family business, which is there in the form of distributing Srila Prabhupada's books. Srila Prabhupada would, would take great pleasure 
in hearing the reports how the devotees were working hard trying to distribute books. And Srila Prabhupada understood that it's not a very easy thing. He himself used to distribute his books. Before even going to America, he used to distribute. In the beginning, he published a Back to Godhead newspaper. It was a very simple news, began in 1944. And it was just a black and white, of course, it was not color, and it was newsprint, just like a newspaper. There was no good paper available. And Prabhupada somehow wrote some articles and put it together in the form of his Back to Godhead. And then Prabhupada, after having, after writing the articles and then going to the printers and getting the newspaper published, then Prabhupada would personally go out to distribute it. And sometimes he would go and he would go to the tea shop in Delhi, in New Delhi. You know, in India people are very fond of tea. You know, you go on a railway train in India and every morning you hear chai, chai, you know. They chant that mantra in the trains. In the, the railway platform also you hear the same thing. Chai. <laughs> and people, of course, people are, they get, they're addicted to it, unfortunately. That's a mantra. You see, we need to give them a better mantra. Of course, we have the much better mantra than anything they have. But they need to be educated. Unfortunately, they've been miseducated. Where did the tea come from? Tea came originally from China. Originally, it originated in China and then the British brought tea to India. And they used to give the tea away free in the beginning. That's the uh, marketing art. Some, maybe if you're in if you do any marketing, some often people in order to popularize, popularize a product, they will give it away free in the beginning. And then people get to like it. And then after they get to like it, then they start selling it to them. It's a marketing strategy. They give you a free sample sometimes the free sample, in this way you think, oh, this is very nice, uh, and you buy more. So, this is uh, how they distributed tea, but we're not doing like that. Initially, we were always selling our books. When Srila Prabhupada came to the West, the devotees were not sure how to support the centers because there was no congregation. So Srila Prabhupada said, you should all find jobs. So in the beginning they, they tried to find some jobs and some people even got jobs in a cigarette factory. And Srila Prabhupada told them, no, you can't do that. You should not work in cigarette factory. Sometimes devotees have, have to work in these unfortunate kind of environments. A brewery or a Coca-Cola factory or something. <laughs> these not not really a devotional atmosphere. But sometimes just for to find a job in order to work, sometimes people have to accept that kind of condition. Anyway, the devotees found it difficult to get suitable jobs 
but somehow it happened that they, they started to do Sankirtan. Prabhupada had told them that it's good if you go and chant in public. Prabhupada himself had gone to chant in the Tompkins Square Park in New York. And so Prabhupada encouraged the devotees that you go and chant in the public. This was in San Francisco. And in San Francisco there's a big park, Golden Gate Park. So the devotees went there, they were chanting. And, but the, and then sometimes they would go into the street. There's a fisherman's wharf in San Francisco. It's a big shopping marketplace. And the devotees went there chanting. And somehow a devotee got the idea that he would go with a conch shell and he would put the conch and he would say, give donation, you know. <laughs> and, this, and some people would start to give donations. And then this way, one day they collected one dollar, then another day it was three dollars, and another day five dollars. And the devotees were thinking, you know, this is better than working. Why should we work in these horrible factories? We can just go out and chant Hare Krishna and we can get some donations from people. And then of course the idea came, we should give them books, give them a magazine. Because Srila Prabhupada, although he began the Back to Godhead in India, when he got to America, he gave the magazine to his disciples and said, I began this magazine, now you take it. I want you to run it and edit, write articles, publish it and distribute it. And so the devotees, they did it in a simple way. It was like a, we had the, an old Gestetner printer and you would print one page and then print another page and then when you get you know, pages, you have to collect the pages together, collate the pages and staple it. And so they did like that. That was the, the first Back to Godheads in the West. Prabhupada did first one in India, which was just a simple sheet, big sheet of newspaper. But when they got to the West, the devotees started printing sheets and putting it together and stapling it. And in this way it became a magazine and they would go and distribute it and distribute it and when they would do Sankirtan. And Srila Prabhupada had also come to America with some books. When Prabhupada got the passage on the Jaladuta, the ship, to go to Boston, Prabhupada also arranged to bring his books. The, the book which he had printed in India. In India he had began printing Srimad Bhagavatam and he had printed the first canto in three volumes. So three volumes of Srimad Bhagavatam. He had it printed, I don't remember how many copies he printed in the beginning. Some copies he had distributed in India but he the books which he had, he had them put in big crates and put on the ship, on the Jaladutta. So when he got to Boston, he made sure the books were unloaded and he took the books with him. He had them shipped to where he was staying. And Prabhupada would arrange programs or wherever he went, people would arrange programs for Srila Prabhupada. Just like when Prabhupada first arrived in America, he went, he stayed with a family, he stayed in their home, well he didn't stay in their home, but they arranged for him to stay in the YMCA, right? You all know what YMCA is, right? So he was staying in a room there, they had like a guest house kind of thing and he, they rented a room for Prabhupada and every day he would go to this family's home and cook and he'd cook prasadam for them. The family was one Indian man named Agarwal 
who came from somewhere near Mathura and he was the one who had arranged Prabhupada to get the visa to go to America. So Prabhupada went, he stayed at their home and this man, although he was from India, he had married an American lady. So her name was Sally. She was known as Sally Agarwal. And they had a child and they were very nice. They were very accommodating to Srila Prabhupada. And you know this Mr. Agarwal had been married to this American woman so he, he'd lost his Indian culture. But Prabhupada came there and Prabhupada offered to cook for them and show them how to cook. Indian food and Prabhupada was a good cook, you know, he knew how to cook very nicely. And he would cook for them and they would enjoy very much, both Mr. Agarwal and the American lady, Sally Agarwal. So they arranged programs, some programs for Prabhupada in different places and wherever Prabhupada would speak, he would always talk about, he would tell people that I have my book. If you like, you can purchase one set, three volumes. Even when Prabhupada was on the boat, when he was coming to America, he sold the captain of the ship one set of books. Prabhupada went to America with 40 rupees, no dollars, zero dollars. Nowadays, if you go with zero dollars, they'll say, go away. They won't let you in the country, you know. But and when Prabhupada went there, it wasn't a big problem. Anyway, Prabhupada talked to the captain of the ship, it was Captain Pandya, and he sold him a set of books. And the man get, was so generous, he gave Prabhupada twenty dollars for three volumes, the first canto of Srimad Bhagavat. That was the only spending money Prabhupada had when he first arrived in America. Prabhupada said, you could spend it in a few, a few hours easily. Twenty dollars, nothing. So anyway, Prabhupada, I'm, I'm, I want you to understand how much Prabhupada was always thinking about distributing his books. Not only Srimad Bhagavatam, but also back to Godhead. He got the devotees to write articles. Have any of you written an article? Have you tried to write anything for back to Godhead? You know, you, you're educated people, you could write. Tell something about your preaching, tell something about the activities which go on here in Malaysia. It's an important activity for all of us as devotees. Even they don't publish. Just like I write sometimes and I send to them, they never, they don't like it. <laughs> this this terrible, they say. <laughs> okay, no problem. It, but it's just the thought that you try to write, that's the main thing, you know? You want, you, we should try to serve, do service for Krishna. There's no failure in trying to serve Krishna. Just the fact that we attempt it, that is glorious. So, the, of course, the example is Lord Nityananda and Haridas Thakur went to preach to Jagai and Madhai and they got, they had to run, they were chased for their life. But it's, it wasn't a failure because they tried. They mean, but if you don't try, that's not good. We should all make some effort to do some service for Krishna. So I'm saying, one thing you can do, you can write articles about Krishna Consciousness. And another thing we can do is to try to dis distribute, distribute Prabhupada's books in different places wherever you go. 
When I joined the Krishna Consciousness Movement, our movement was supported by book distribution. Our only income came from selling books. And we would regularly, every day we would go out and we would try to distribute books. And whatever collection we received, it all went to maintain the temple. So, nowadays our movement is a little different. Because in those days everybody was ashram. We were all staying in the ashram, in the temple. Mostly all single people. Nobody had married yet. They were, we were all young people. So we were living together in the ashram and we were serving the temple. We, we didn't keep our own money. Nobody had any money. So nowadays it's different. Nowadays our movement is much more of a congregation base. In other words, many of you are married or you have jobs. You're not living in the ashram. And so because you have jobs, you have money, so you can use that money to distribute books. You can give books to people. You can give them freely. We have a thing, a program called Shastradan. In other words, people give some charity and it helps to support the book distribution. We can go out like when we go for Harinam Sankirtan, at that time we can distribute books. And of course His Holiness Jaipataka Swami, he had some very big programs during periods like uh, Bhadra Purnima. There's an auspicious day in the calendar called Bhadra Purnima and it said to distribute one set of Srimad Bhagavatam on that day is very, very auspicious. And so Jayapataka Swami Maharaj, he takes a lot of pledges from devotees and they pledge one set and he will just arrange, give one set to that people, send one set there, in different places they get a set of Srimad Bhagavatam. There are many places in the world and people in the world who are not very wealthy, they don't have much money, but they're very happy to take a set of books and to read it. They want to read it. They're very happy to receive these things. Particularly places like Bangladesh and India, part, different parts of India. Some parts of India are very quite wealthy now, but not all parts of India are like that. One of the devotees, His Holiness Bhakti Purushottam Swami, he is preaching to the tribal people. And he goes in the, the mountainous regions and places like this. And the, in these kind of places, the Christians are often going and converting, trying to convert people, looking for people to bring into their church. Uh, some time back I was in Thailand and I was, uh, at that time we were just beginning the preaching there in Bangkok and I took a course in the Thai language for some time and the other people who were in the course, they were Americans who, were, who had been Christian missionaries and they told me they used to go, they were in Nepal and they would always go to the Hindu people to convert them to Christianity. They said they are the easiest people to bring out and to bring them to Jesus. So this is unfortunate that sometimes people who are actually born in the Vedic culture who are in actually born in Hindu families, that they can easily go adrift 
they can lose that connection and somehow they get converted. Although the Indian government does try to protect, protect them, but still it happens. Just the other day, just a, a few days back, I was in Johor Bahru and I was staying in one devotee's home and it happened, a car pulled up and three young ladies got out of the car and they had come to preach Christianity and they had come to this house where I was staying. <laughs> It, it was quite a surprise to see me and they didn't know what to think. <laughs> but anyway, they were, the, the, the devotees there, they told me that, oh, they, they had come before and they'd given us some Christian paper, newspaper, and she said to them, you know, I'll take your book, will you take my book? If I give you a Bhagavad Gita, will you take it? But they said, no, no. <laughs> They didn't want our book, but they wanted to give their book. So you have to understand that there are a lot of other groups who are going around and they're canvassing and they're trying to take away our devotees and they're trying to bring them into their fold. So we have to be very careful and try to really care and reach out to our people, those people who are actually coming in a good line, they have a, a good birth, just to be born in this culture, it's a good birth. We have to protect them and give them all encouragement. So book distribution is really very, very important to reach out to people, to let them get a book. And sometimes, sometimes even you just, can just leave the book somewhere. Maybe there's a little library, maybe you go to a doctor's clinic or a dental clinic and they have some books and magazines there. You can leave one of our books there. It's always good, keep some book with you and be ready to share it, to give it to others. It's, this is our business, our family business. I was watching a video about Gopal Krishna Goswami. Gopal Krishna Goswami Maharaj, he preaches in New Delhi and in Mumbai and many places in India, but he also preaches in Russia, in Moscow, and he also preaches in places like Canada, where he had joined the Krishna Consciousness Movement. So at one point, the devotees in Vancouver, it, it, they arranged for Gopal Krishna Maharaj to go on a talk show. But this talk show, they had this really nasty guy, you know, who was interviewing people and he'd be really insulting and heavy and like that, you know. So they, they put Gopal Krishna Maharaj on the screen with this man, you know, on live television with this man. And this man was talking to him and he said, I've seen you people, you stand on the street corners and you try to beg money from people all the time. And Gopal Krishna Maharaj said, yeah, that was in the past. He said, that was when we began the movement. He said, but we don't do that nowadays. He said, nowadays we have our devotees, we have many devotees, and nowadays we give the books out. We don't just sell all the books. If people want, like to give a donation, we don't refuse it. But if people want the book, we're willing to give them the book. And so like this Gopal Krishna Maharaj was very expertly count countering the criticisms which come. And then he turned the tables on that man and said, What about you? Do you eat meat, fish and eggs? Do you take intoxication? Do you gamble? Do you do all illicit things? 
And the man, uh, the man, he, he didn't know what to say. He said, what can I say? He said, he said, yeah, of course, I do all these things. And Gopal Krishna Maharaj said, yeah, you're a sinful man. You're doing all bad things. What is your destination at the end of life? So like this, he was preaching very nicely and powerfully and silencing the, this man. So this, this is our business as devotees. We have to go out, we have to go out and meet people. We, we like to share Krishna consciousness with others. Right? We came to, Prabhupada said, I came to give. So our, we have to also have the giving mood. There's a common saying, it's better to give than to receive. So we want to give the message of Krishna Consciousness. And we have a lot to give. You may say, I don't know anything. What do I know? I don't have any. You just simply, there was a little girl, right? A little, just like we have these young girls here, young ladies. So one of these young girls, they were there in India. They'd come from America with their mother and father. and. She was go the little girl was going around with a picture of Lord Krishna and she would show it to people and say, this is Krishna, this is God. And Prabhupada was so pleased, he said, just see, she is an expert preacher. So like this, we may not know a lot, you don't have to know a lot, but you do have to use what you know. That's very important. Don't just try to keep it for yourself, but be willing to give it out. And the more we give, the more it will come back to us. So this month is, as I said, December. It's a very important month for us. And everywhere people are celebrating. They'll celebrate the Christmas and they'll celebrate the New Year and tomorrow is a public holiday in Slang On, right? And so you have an opportunity you know, to go somewhere, go to the temples, go somewhere and put a little book table or do something. Even if they don't let you in the temple, put a table somewhere outside on the street and just try to introduce people to Prabhupada's books and tell them about Krishna Consciousness. There are many devotees out there, but they're just waiting for us to find them. Just like in, during the lockdown period, the devotees began to do the Gita Gyan seminars online. This is a seminar where the devotees explain the Bhagavad Gita, a chapter a day. It's 18 day seminar and each day they will explain one chapter. So it was a, a, a huge response when the devotees first offered this, these seminars online. There were more than a thousand people all enrolling wanted to hear the Bhagavad Gita. So there, it just shows us how much people really are looking for something, they want to know more, they're out there and they're suffering and they need our help. We should be willing to give them Krishna Consciousness. We should be willing to take some time out of our own schedules to give and to share and to talk to them the message of Lord Krishna. It's not a big task, it's not very difficult. We just have to, just have to make the effort and Krishna's in the heart. Krishna helps us. When you try when we are sincere and we really want to try to do something, Krishna helps. Krishna speaks through the devotee. 
sometimes you will often hear actually, Jaipataka Swami Maharaj, he will say at the beginning of his classes, he will say, Mukam Karoti Vachalam Pangam lam Langayate Girim Yad Kripata Maham Bande Shri Garum Dinatarinam Paramananda Ishwaram Shri Chaitanya like that. The meaning is a dumb man can recite poetry, a blind man can see the stars, and a lame man can cross mountains by the mercy of the Supreme Lord Krishna and the Panchatattva. So when we try to do a little service, then certainly Lord Krishna will help us. And so I'm explaining I'm encouraging all of you, please try, introduce some of our literature to people. Of course, many people will say, oh, I have Bhagavad Gita. So then we want to know, what, it, what book Bhagavad Gita? Do you have Bhagavad Gita as it is, or some other book? So if they, if they don't have as it is, then they should have as it is. That's Prabhupada's book. And if they already have as it is, then we have to ask them, did you read it? And then they, they'll say, well, I tried. Mm -hmm. Or uh, I'm, I'm going to read it. So then we can suggest to them that they can also join our Gita Gyan seminars. And they can register for these things. It's a free seminar. So they're encouraged to do something like that. And then we also encourage them that we have other books. If you think maybe Bhagavad Gita is too big, sometimes people see the Bhagavad Gita. Oh, so many pages. Oh, it's a big book. Oh, I can't read such a big book. All right, we have small books. We, we have smaller books. You can read some of the small books which are based on lectures of the Bhagavad Gita, books like Beyond Birth and Death, Perfection of Yoga, King of Knowledge, these kind of books, small books. Somehow or other we have to engage people in Krishna consciousness. And it often happens you'll find somebody who wants to get a whole set they're looking, they don't just want one book, but they like to have a whole library. One of the devotees in Russia, he told me, he was, in, he was out in, actually we were in a place called Sakhalinsk, which is away in the far east of Russia, and it's an island. It's an island, famous for winter sports. <laughs> right? A lot of snow there. People come to ski. And so he was there for the Christmas marathon and he was doing book distribution and he met one man and the man said, Oh, I've been looking for one of you people. He said, I want the whole set. I want all the books. And he said, I want two, two sets. One for my office, one for my home. And he got two full sets of all the books. So, you know, that's in some remote corner of the world. You could never imagine, you know, all snow and ice and, you know, people are really cold. But still somebody comes up and they say, I want two sets, full sets. So, you have, to, you have to be out there. If you're not out there, if you don't go out, then you'll never meet these kind of people. You have to be willing to take some little trouble to try to find out the devotees. And this, this is our principle in Krishna consciousness to go and to preach and just try to give Krishna consciousness. Lord Chaitanya, of course, told the Brahmana, Kurukshetra, 
यारी देखी थारे कहो कृष्ण उपदेश अमारा गाया गुरु हना थारा ए इदेश wherever you go whoever you meet tell them about krishna and in this way become a spiritual teacher and save the save the world yes we need to save the world we need to play our little part you know we're not very powerful or very great but whatever little part we can play Lord Krishna will appreciate it and he reciprocates and he makes arrangements for us to meet genuine people and to share Krishna consciousness with them so this is this month of December this is the time when devotees are encouraged particularly this month to try to make greater efforts than any other time that at this particular time people are often in a charitable mood they're maybe a bit more open minded and easier to approach thinking of the festive season so we try to take advantage to go out and to meet people and to distribute Prabhupada's books. There's nothing which gives you more pleasure than giving a book to someone. When somebody gets a book and they say, Oh, I want this book. Oh, I was, I, I was looking for this. You feel so good. And just think, if you give a book to someone and then later on that person comes, becomes a devotee, then you feel so satisfied. It's the most satisfying experience. It's the greatest pleasure to see someone come to Krishna consciousness. So like I say, there are many souls out there. They're waiting. They're looking. And it's up to us to try to reach out, to go and greet them. So Rathiyatras are coming. We have our Klein Rathiyatra, of course, it's on 24th of December. But if you're able to, we have other Rathiyatras. I think on 25th, there's a Rathiyatra on Singis, in Singisiput. And then on 16th, next weekend, there's a Rathiyatra up at Butterworth. That's on the Friday. And on the Saturday, 17th, the Rathiyatra will be in Penang. And Penang, usually that's a, a big Rathiyatra. Penang being the bigger city, we often enjoy going through the India Bazaar there in Penang. We have usually maybe three chariots. I don't know this year if they will have again three chariots. But it's always a very nice Rathiyatra with many devotees. Actually at present there are some four different temples in Penang. So there will be many people coming for the Penang Rathiyatra. And then on the 1st of January, on the 1st of January we have Rathiyatra at Melaka. And that will also be, there will be three chariots and many people also come. Milaka, it's 1st of January, it's a holiday, it's a Sunday. Monday is also holiday, so you can come on Sunday and you can rest on Monday. <laughs> After Rathiyatra. After chanting and dancing and distributing Krishna consciousness, then you can rest on the Monday. But uh, the, the idea is Rathi Atra is an opportunity for all of us to come together and to chant together and to also distribute the glories of Lord Jagannath to let everyone see the form of Lord Jagannath, the Lord of the universe. It is said, and everyone who sees the Lord on his chariot, 
then they are liberated. They become freed of sinful reactions. <laughs> Hare Krishna. So we are encouraging all of you. You are the devotees. So especially for our Klangra Yatra. And of course, Christmas, on New Year's Eve, 31st of December, there will be a big kirtan, kirtan mellows at the Jagannath Mandir. So you're all invited to come to KL on New Year's Eve and join in the big kirtan which is going to take place. I don't know if you're having any program here, are you? When is that, Maharaj? 31st of December. So, yes, right. You can come to KL. We will have very big kirtan with many devotees. So it's a nice way to bring in the new year, chanting the holy name. We want to make it a nice resolution for the new year to chant more and to take part in Krishna conscious activities. All right, so we will stop here and ask if there's any questions. Any question? Yes, pr yes Prabhu. Yes, Prabhu. How to, how, oh. how, what happened to this one? How to convince an impersonalist? Hare Krishna, we're back. So, how to convince an impersonalist to take up Krishna consciousness? Well, one of the most difficult things to do is to argue with them because they won't admit defeat. And so, generally, you could waste a lot of time just arguing with them and get nowhere. But if you really want to help them, let them have prasadam and let them join the kirtan. 
those two things will be very effective. You give them nice prasadam and you have a nice kirtan. And Prabhupada, we saw with Prabhupada one time, one morning there in London. Jai Gurnitai, Jai Jagannath. One morning in London, there was this young man and Prabhupada was preaching to him and the man was arguing. Everything Prabhupada said, the man would argue and Prabhupada would preach and preach. You know, Prabhupada saw the man was not very submissive, not very seriously interested. But Prabhupada was preaching because there were many other devotees there. And the devotees could hear Prabhupada give many different examples. Powerful examples which would convince any reasonable person. But this young man was not going to be convinced. And so anyway, after some time, Prabhupada went for a walk. Morning walk. He liked to go on morning walk. He came back from... and when he came back, he passed the temple room. And he saw in the temple room that same man who had been arguing with him. He was in the temple room and he was chanting and dancing with the devotees. And Prabhupada turned to the devotees and said, See, this is Lord Chaitanya's method. Chanting and dancing. And in this way, even these hard-hearted, narrow-minded, dull-brained people like impersonalists, they also can become devotees. So we try to give this process, this holy name, the kirtan, very important, very powerful. Let them join in the kirtan and chant. And then after chanting and dancing, then you give them nice prasadam. And in this way, they get a very positive experience of Krishna consciousness. But if you just simply argue with them, even though your philosophy may be very good, you won't convince them. They don't have the intelligence to understand. So you have to give them this mercy of Lord Chaitanya, which comes in the form of the Sankirtan movement. Let them chant, let them hear the kirtan, if they can join in, even better and give them nice prasadam let them enjoy Krishna prasadam and in this way you see they they can become devotees they're not really impersonalists they're trying to be impersonalists they didn't they don't know anything better so you give them the holy name and you give them prasadam and their hearts can be changed We are not Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Lord Chaitanya could talk to Prakashananda Sarasati and Banaras and all the Mayavadi sannyasis and he could discuss Vedanta with them and he could convince them and get them to chant the holy name. But we're not Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. We don't have that same ability. The best thing we can do is to give them the holy name and to give them nice prasadam. And in this way gradually they get respect for our Krishna consciousness movement. Of course, if they're submissive, if they're willing to hear, then you can talk to them. But generally these people are not very willing to hear. They're not willing to hear. They just want to argue and you can waste a lot of time. You can just waste your time and energy talking to no avail. You don't get anywhere because they just want to argue. They don't want to hear. We give Krishna consciousness to people who want to hear. They first have to be willing to hear. Then we can explain to them. But if they just want an argument, oh, yeah, okay, you defeated me. Just go away, leave me. We don't waste their time arguing. We have more things to do, better things to do than to argue 
stupid people. So just try to attract them to the kirtan. One time Prabhupada was in Japan, in Osaka. Prabhupada was, had been invited there to give a lecture. But it turned out there was another sadhu there also giving a lecture, who was a Mayavadi. So first of all Prabhupada gave lecture. So Prabhupada gave his lecture and then, then finished his lecture. And then they asked this Mayavadi man to give the lecture. So the Mayavadi, he was speaking in Hindi and the devotees who were with Prabhupada, they didn't know Hindi. They were all American devotees. They didn't know Hindi. But this sadhu was speaking in Hindi and he was speaking and he spoke. And as he spoke, he got more and more part, more and more enthused in speaking strongly. And at one point Prabhupada just turned to the devotees and said, Start the kirtan. <laughs> the man was still talking. <laughs> but Prabhupada said, Start the kirtan. And so the devotees, they, 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 they didn't know what to do. Anyway, they got the cart out, they got up. Hare Krishna! <laughs> and they had a big kirtan, you know. And so the man just had to stop. So later on, they asked Prabhupada, What happened Prabhupada? Why did you ask this? In, Prabhupada said, I could not tolerate what he was saying. He was talking this Mayavadi philosophy. He said, I could not tolerate it. So that's why I told you to stop him. Start the kirtan. Prabhupada didn't want to, he couldn't even, he could not tolerate to hear because it, they were saying, you know, the Brahman is the Supreme and Krishna is from the impersonal Brahman and ultimately it's all one, this kind of nonsense. So Prabhupada just told the devotees, start the kirtan and in this way purify the atmosphere. So we don't like to hear these kind of things. So any other questions, please? We have uh, still another 15 minutes to go. Maybe you can come in front there, front here. No. So Srila Prabhupada, we offer our respects to Srila Prabhupada, of course, in his Pranam Mantra, which had, the, the Pranam Mantra was actually composed by Srila Prabhupada himself. The devotees, they, had, they saw how Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati Prabhupada there are three pranam mantras in addition to the original pranam mantra which is offered. There are three other mantras glorifying his preaching activities. So the devotees approach Prabhupada and ask Prabhupada, Prabhupada, we want some more prayers to glorify you. So then Prabhupada composed this mantra, Namaste Sarasati Devi Gauravani Pricharine nirvisesha shunyavadi paschacha deshatarini that we offer our respectful obeisances to Prabhupada who is a servant of Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati and he is preaching the message of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to defeat the impersonalism and voidism in the western world. So Prabhupada was preaching against that, not only in the West, but also in the East as well. He wanted the message of Lord Chaitanya preached all over the world. Because Lord Chaitanya had predicted that the Holy Name would go every town and village. And so Srila Prabhupada had that vision. And so from the very beginning, 
when he first went to the West, he would speak about, he said, I have my world headquarters in Vrindavan. And the devotees would think, oh, he must have a big building or something somewhere. Actually, all he had in Vrindavan was a small room. Just a small room there in Radha Damodar temple. But Prabhupada saw that as his world headquarters for the Krishna consciousness movement. And Prabhupada, from that place Prabhupada envisioned how Krishna consciousness could be established all over the world with centers everywhere and with programs and Prabhupada of course he devised the program. Now our program in Krishna consciousness it's, it's a little different from the Gaudiya Mat. In Gaudiya Mat Srila Prabhupada was originally a member in the Gaudiya Mat. He was initiated there by Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati. Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati had initiated Prabhupada at Prayagraj, what is known today as Prayagraj. Previously it was called Allahabad. Srila Prabhupada had a business there which he called Prayag Pharmacy. And he had met the devotees and Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati initiated him, actually gave him both initiations at the same time. And uh, Srila Prabhupada wanted to try to work in the Gaudiya Mat. As a member of the Gaudiya Mat, he was helping. And at one point even the devotees were saying they thought Prabhupada should be in charge of the temple in Mumbai. But Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati said, no, no, not, don't, not, let, leave him. He said, in the future he will do everything. So later on, of course, Srila Prabhupada got his opportunity that he could begin the Krishna consciousness movement. And he had to devise the the programs which we would have, just like we have morning program, evening program, what should be done, what should be our schedule and so on. Some things are different. The Gaudiya Mat, how they do things and how we do things. We give a lot of importance to book distribution. But in the Gaudiya Mat, they didn't print many books. Although Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati, he liked to print books and distribute them. And even if somebody would distribute even a pamphlet and collect just a few paisa, he would praise them. He was very happy to see the devotees going and trying to preach. That was the mode of Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati in his time. However, after his departure, then the interest in book distribution went down and instead people began to fight with each other about the property, who should, who should be in charge of this property and who should be in charge of that. Like that, the, the, the interest was more in the, the assets of their Gaudiya Mat rather than in the mission of the Gaudiya Mat. The actual mission was to distribute Krishna consciousness, to distribute the message of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. But instead of thinking of the mission, they just simply thought about the assets, having the nice building, being comfortable in our temple. That is not the mood which Lord Chaitanya encouraged. And that was not the mood of Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati Prabhupada. Rather his mood was to go out, he liked to see the devotees go out and distribute Krishna consciousness. And he himself traveled extensively around India, preaching and visiting different places, giving lectures, establishing the authority 
of the Krishna and no one could defeat him. Wherever he went, he had to establish, for example, the right for people who are not born in Brahmana families to wear a sacred thread. Previously, there were objections from the smarter Brahmins. There were objections about many of the preaching, many of the dealings which Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati did. They did not like even the worship of the deity of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. They considered this is not that he is not God, that he is just he is just some great personality or he is maybe an avatar, but he is not the Supreme Lord. So Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati had to refute all of these different arguments on the basis of scriptures. So he was very scholarly and he was very powerful in presenting the Krishna conscious philosophy. He was a lifetime brahmachari, naistika brahmachari. So he was very powerful in preaching, very bold. He was more than six foot tall. He was very tall for Bengalis. Usually Bengalis are shorter people, but he was tall and he was powerful and he would preach very strongly to people. Sometimes people would run away from him. They just saw him coming, they would turn and run. They would be afraid to confront him. So he had that mood. He was known as Narsimha Guru because he preached so strongly and so boldly. And he encouraged also his devotees that they should not compromise in the message of the Absolute Truth. They should not just simply be concerned to get money from people and sacrifice their purity. Rather the important thing is to preach the truth. Whether people like it or not, the truth should be spoken. And Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati spoke in that manner. He was very powerful, very fearless. And he did not worry about keeping money in the temple. He would come to the temples and see how much money they had, then he would spend it. He would put on a diorama exhibition or some kind of display of the pastimes of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He wouldn't want them to just keep money. The devotees would complain. They would say, oh Guru Maharaj, you're spending all the money, there will be no money. And he would say, yes, good, you will have to go out and preach. And so like this he encouraged the devotees not to sit, not to just be idle, but to go out and preach. And book distribution is one of the ways in which we ourselves engage. We try to encourage people, take a book, read this book. It can change your life. So we have many books. We have lots of beautiful books, nice books with color pictures. There's so many things. And so much wonderful knowledge, so much wisdom. And the beauty of our books are that they can be understood. Other books, books by these other teachers, very hard to understand, very difficult. But Prabhupada's books are very real, very clear in their meaning, and very nice to understand, and very important knowledge. So we try our best to distribute these books to people everywhere. Let them get some book and take it with them. We should keep books with us. 
when you go for preaching, have a Bhagavad Gita with you. We just celebrated the anniversary of the speaking of Bhagavad Gita last weekend. So everybody, at that time we were reciting Bhagavad Gita. So reciting is good and hearing and understanding is even better. All right, we will stop here, Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. So, I'd like to thank uh, Maharaj for a wonderful 